Okay, this is Kate Middleton's engagement ring, and it was Lady Diana, Princess Diana's beforehand. And today is Tuesday. Kate Middleton's getting married on Friday, and I'm going to show you how to draw the ring. And let's not talk about it. Let's do it. How to draw Kate Middleton's engagement ring? Well, you might be watching this in ten years. You might be watching this in a hundred years' time, for all I know. And. Uh, Kate Middleton will then be known as Princess Kate. She'll probably be known as Princess Catherine, actually. I think they're trying to make her called Princess Catherine. And um, and this is her engagement ring. And today is t Tuesday? I have no idea what day it is. It's Tuesday, and they're getting married on Friday. So everyone's getting slightly excited. Now, I'm going to draw that down a line slightly at one angle just to give me a kind of a sense of the centre of the ring and right in the middle is this great big sapphire um, and I want this to be slightly to one side so the kind of the front face of the sapphire will be slightly to this side and then you're gonna, I, 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 I can't find anything give you really fine detail on, on, on the way it's cut um, so in fact, that line is now kind of more like that, the centre. So here, put in a diamond at the top and a diamond at the bottom. And you've got to fit in six round each side. So it's actually more circular, a bit more circular. So go one, two, three. So that's kind of your centre line. Four, five, six. And on this side, they're going to be slightly round behind. So. You want them to be slightly more, not circular, but kind of elliptical. So it's one, two, oh, that's going to be too much, isn't it? One, two, three, four, five, six. And then they'll, they'll kind of be thinner on this side and fatter on this side. Like that. And here, in between each thing, you've got a clasp holding the, uh, the sapphire on, like that and like that and then kind of in between each diamond then you've got this kind of star radiating out which is made of platinum the whole ring is platinum as I understand it <laughs> and then there's a kind of a little it's not really a ball but it, it they don't have sharp points so it's a kind of a oh, I don't know what you would call it really and that's kind of it now so that's the center of the ring. So you're going to get the the band of the ring kind of coming out like that and curve it kind of around like that, but with a more flat edge there. Then bring it here and just in a little bit and just in a bit there. Good. Uh, and I'm going to put a little bit of a, a kind of a highlight radiating out from there. Which I will do first because the highlight is on the the front. How are we fitting it? It's fitting in nicely. There we are. Good. Uh, I'm going to do it kind of like that. And, and maybe the other little kind of mini. It's a sparkle. That's probably the word I'm looking for, isn't it? It's kind of that's going to be a sparkle. Um, and then kind of go around the the kind of the planes of the. Uh, I think. Probably actually we need to do the the claspy bits next, like that. Um, I haven't got forever to do this video, so I'm rushing it a little bit. Um, let me think about these diamonds. These are going to be you're going to be seeing the ones on this side slightly underneath. So uh, put a kind of a a circle again, slightly to one side, going behind the sparkle. Um, and that'll be in the middle and then these will be more kind of on the outside of the bit there and then I think you'll be forgiven just for doing a kind of a strange wobbly kind of shape for these diamonds which are you know they've obviously they're cut and they have that diamond shape to them oh let's do this the rest of the sapphire on that side coming round like that and then you can do the rest of the diamonds like that 
there and then I would do these little circles but not complete circles and just slightly over half circles like that put them all the way around first Ooh, I think that's slightly wrong position <laughs> uh, you know, if I was didn't have a camera and I didn't feel pressured I would take a bit more time over this but uh, you've got the time and I haven't so right and then you can draw those in like that there we go and then we just need to fit in the band around the back bring that round so it just kind of flicks around there around there like that and if you're desperate I see I'm you can tell I'm a black and white person like drink black and white drawing so I'm putting a bit of black and white shading in there but I should stop because I'm going to paint this now and I want to make sure this is absolutely dry and usually I go and do this and I'll just give it a quick wash with my hair dryer just to make sure um, so we get make sure all the pencil I mean make sure all your ink is dry and usually with these Rotring graphic sticky pens they usually are, but I found recently I've been kind of overdrawing it and they've been getting um, little little spots like like where I've done there that would be a bit too dark, um, too wet and it would uh, smear when I erased it. So let's see what we can do with this. I got my watercolour paints. People keep asking me what kind of watercolour paints do I use? And this is, um, I've had this set. <laughs> for, I don't know, 25, 30 years or something now. Um, and these are Winsor and Newton artist professional colours. And you get them in, these These are called pans, these are half pan size. And um, so I'm going to kind of crudely fill in those areas like that. And then I'm not quite sure, I'll do something like that. And I'm just going to wet my brush to give a bit of graduated kind of shading in like that just to give it a bit of a bit of interest really rather than it just being flat colour this is something you just learn over the years um, watercolour is quite a hard medium to work in actually I, I think people think oh it's only watercolour um, expecting to I'm using a colour this is called neutral tint I'm using here, uh, which is a kind of a grey. Um, and I'm just going to drop that in in various places on the diamonds because diamonds are a very <laughs> diamonds are a strange colour. I don't think I've ever tried to paint a diamond before today. I'm no, no. I think this is the first time I've ever tried. So this is a bit of an experiment. Um, what was I saying? Uh, watercolours. People think watercolours are uh, really easy because, you know, that's what you did when you were a child, isn't it? <laughs> but in fact, I think watercolours are... I mean, anyone can splash paint around um, on a canvas. Watercolour requires kind of skill and practice, years of practice. Um, now, this is platinum, so I'm making it kind of blue rather than a gold colour. And... Uh, I'm just kind of filling in those areas. I think we need a bit of blue probably highlighted in the diamonds as well. I'm going to give, get my hair dryer and give that a bit of a dry. One of the things about watercolour is, um, you see with paint you're actually putting pigment onto a canvas and you're actually putting colour on there and it's the paint that reflects the light. What you're doing with watercolour is a completely different process. It's the light is coming from the white paper and you're putting on very thin kind of transparent glazes over the top and so you're relying on the light pouring out from the paper, reflected back from the paper through the colours that you're laying on the top. So you need to kind of lay them down in layers rather than if you just splash down really hard heavy colour then it's, it's not going to look right. To be able to get kind of bright looking watercolours um, you really need to kind of build it up in layers and um, yeah as I say you know I'm not you know, I, when I say anyone can splash paint around on a on a canvas you know well that's true actually you can you know I mean 
that, that I think that's what's different between painting and we can say watercolor is actually um, quite often referred to as drawing. You know, it kind of comes into if you go to look at uh, you know an exhibition of drawings in a museum or something, you'll find watercolors in there as well uh, because it is it is seen as you know kind of part of the art of drawing. Whereas paint is a completely different thing, different mindset. You're actually laying color down, whereas here you're kind of drawing with colour. I, I can't explain it better than that. I don't know. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can look it up and see if there's actually a definition somewhere and I'll do that one day. Uh, how are we doing for time? 10 minutes 25! That's ridiculous! Okay, I'm gonna have to do some kind of little dark bits just in, in the kind of... Where's the time gone? It was kind of five minutes, two minutes ago. Um, I think I think that's almost what I'm going to do. I'm just about to, I think I'm just going to uh, do a little bit of kind of curves around there. Um, and actually, it's not looking too bad, is it, really? Uh, I'll just do a little bit of kind of shade and like that. I'm going to call that it. <laughs> Good. OK. <laughs> I don't think that's looking too bad. Well, it gives you an idea. So uh, there we go. If you enjoyed that, uh, subscribe and keep coming back to the Shoe Rain and Droid channel on YouTube. And uh, what can I say in the meantime? But keep drawing, practice, 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 and I'll see you next time. OK. Happy weddings and woohoo, all that stuff. OK. <laughs> Take care. Bye bye.